That's an interesting choice. That that antagonizes me a little bit. <laughs> I feel a little antagonized. <laughs> this this line right here. That's a little out of left field for me. Hey everyone, so today I've got something a little bit different going on. I am uh, my good friend Marty Schwartz hey. in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, and it's actually not daytime. It is just before 11 p.m. Central Time and there's a new album about to drop that we're gonna check out in real time. We haven't heard, we've heard the, the released stuff, uh, but we haven't heard the unreleased stuff, and we're gonna listen to John Mayer's new record, Sob Rock, from a guitarist perspective and try and uh, tell you guys what we think about it. So, along with Marty, we've got Chris Sherland. Who was my guitar teacher. Everything I teach, was taught to me by this guy here, Chris Sherlin. Taught me guitar in college. He's hanging out here in Nashville and we've been working on some stuff together. But man, it's great to see you. Thanks for having me, man. Dude, thanks yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. appreciate this it. Is so appreciate fun. It. So yeah, we're gonna pull it up and just listen to the stuff in real time. We've got we got uh, guitars plugged up. We're gonna try and figure out what's going on. All right, you wanna pull it up and? Yeah, let's, yeah, check let's it out. do it. Cool. So let's see, we've got Last Train Home we've heard. So this Many next times. one is Shouldn't Matter, But It Does. Okay. Without further ado, let's hear it. Should have been open, should have done more, should have learned a lesson from the year before. Shouldn't matter, but it does. It's a good hook. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty classic, Mayor. Yeah. Feels a little bit like a throwback to some older stuff. Yeah. Just waiting for the drums. I don't think they're coming. If they are, <laughs> if they are coming, it's got to be maybe a big chorus out. Yeah. Chorus I predict just, no. Yeah. yeah the chorus is just that hook after the yeah. pre-chorus. I feel like it's going to stay mellow. Well, there's a shaker. Shaker, yeah. we're hearing some percussion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so Rhett, how, how big of a John Mayer fan are you? Pretty big. I mean, Early on in my my time as a guitar player was, so I started playing guitar like 2002, 2003, right when he was like really taking off. So, so he was a big inspiration to you, I'm sure, the age yeah. that you're at and everything. Yeah, he was. That song, it didn't feel like, hey, I'm super uh, ironic 80s, you know, collar, mm -hmm. collar up 80s, you know, because The only thing that really down. screamed 80s to me was the production. So yeah. like the instrumentation choices, like the, the pad, the pad. The beginning, the pad, super 80s. definitely. The cross stick on the, and the reverb on the snare, yep. the shaker. But otherwise, it's a pretty modern pop progression. You know, yeah. diatonic and E major. Yep. Pretty simple progression. Yeah. Good hook, good writing. Yep. You know? Uh, yeah, I mean, I... Nice and intimate. Yeah, when you feel a song and he hasn't said the whole chorus hook, but you like already can tell feel what's that going it's on. coming. Yeah, yeah. There's something pretty yeah. cool about that. Yeah, I like that. All right, what's next? New Light. Now, I'm familiar with that one. Yeah, we've heard New Light. <clears throat> this next one, Why Why You No Love Me. That's what it's called. Okay. Oh, yeah. Was it, is it really? Why You No Love Me. It really is. Okay. Just a, yeah. I'm verified. Why, why You No Love Me. Okay. All right, here we I go. go. I'm already intrigued. Now, now we're we're getting a little cheekier here. Let's see what happens. Nice. Okay, this is cool. Ooh, that's sweet. Wow. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what to think about that. Oh, that's a, that's from a 80s Chicago song. Yeah. Dude. That chord. Yeah, nice chord. Harmonically, this is the, my favorite song so far. This is pretty much a pretty big departure from anything else happening on pop radio right now, yeah. harmonically. And certainly anything else on the album so far. Yeah. So, yeah, he's going to that... Um, Chord. Yeah. Two major. That's such a BG thing. That is. No, sorry, six major. Oh, six major. Right. Gotcha. We're in A, right? So it's like. Um... Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And then 
he's going to the four minor. Yeah, for the solo. For the solo section. Back this is this is cool, man. I like this. Yeah, I like this a lot. I like it too. Okay, so we've got uh, a song called Wild Blue. I'm already Sultan's in. Sultan's a swing. Sultan's a swing for sure. I'm already in. Wow. It's pretty soft. I love the vocals. Yeah. Pretty straight ahead progression. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, do that. There we go. Oh, he's using yeah. the same tone. It's that second position. Yeah. I'm starting to pick up. I'm starting to smell what he's stepping in a little bit. Here, <laughs> which is like, he's he's calling back to all the '80s sort of cliches. And he is such a talented and great musician that he can feel the aesthetic and make it sound that way. I think. And you can tell what Mayer's doing is using a lot of these types of voicings and you know he's down we're in we're in the key of C here. So. Yeah he's not in the Sultan's key but you know down here. But a lot of this like his first solo that he took was very, very Mark Knopfler esque. Yeah, yeah. And then he ended it with a, a more kind of mayor thing. But this thing that he did Yeah. That line Super nice. That's a Beatles line, right? Send me your love. Yeah. yeah. Total Beatles line. So the next song here is Shot in the Dark is what it's called. Whoa. Okay, that sounds pretty familiar. Well, it's song number six out of ten. That's yeah. kind of the uh, sounds yeah, a lot like filler John. it up a little bit. <laughs> sounds a lot like John Mayer here. It does. It also, this part, is the same device as Last Train Home. Right. It's not the same, but it's it's in yeah, that same fame. fame yeah, theory. triad voice leading thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's snare sound. I believe this is, uh, I think it's Aaron Sterling on drums, this record. Is that the, oh, is that who plays with him live? Uh, who, he was on this last tour. I saw, yeah. Yeah. I know who that is, yeah. Yeah, you guys play that together. <laughs> this one is it moved me the least. Uh, yeah, yeah. Dynamically, there's it's kind of just here. Although that's yeah. my kind of favorite thing going on, because but you know when you hear those like super tasty uh, yeah. studio guitar style. Yep, yep. Right. You know, I mean that's that was the most exciting thing for me from that. Okay, so we're gonna hear till the right one comes. Okay. Yeah. Little Freddie King. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. A little SRB ish there. Yeah, taking some chances. Do that really nice minor pentatonic and really yeah. flushing those blues notes out. Pushing them hard. So how do you guys feel about that? Like when because this is not the first time he's done this on this record where you know you're in a you're in a major key playing over a diatonic progression. Right. He's Yeah. You know, playing it's Minor pentatonic scale or something. Yeah, I think it's cool. Would you play that solo again? Yeah, yeah. Go back? Let's do that. That's an interesting choice. That that antagonizes me a little bit. <laughs> I've been a little antagonized. <laughs> this this line right here. That's a little out of left field for me. Okay, there's one more song. All right, let's do it. All I want is to be with you. Me? Yes, Chris. Nice, little tremolo. Boy, he's using that all over this album. Oh, John. <laughs> right? That 4 1. Yeah. This is, besides the other songs that have already come out, this kind of reminds me of of 80s Springsteen. Yeah. Which is clearly, he's obsessed with Springsteen lately. I think so. Yeah, that's great. That's the old school mayor that we all. A lot of gain. Yeah. Recorded extremely loud. 
You know, one of the things that I really am starting to like about that sort of minor over major here specifically is that the whole album has this real sort of mellow sob rock thing, but there's a bit of anger back there. There's a little bit of nastiness, <laughs> yeah. especially in that track. I mean, that yeah. really feels really good. Yeah. I feel like though overall, it seems pretty safe mm -hmm. harmonically with the exception of the, uh, the second song we listened to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, which I get. Yeah, I think the song that made me zone in on like the vibe and the story was that shouldn't matter, but it does. Yeah. Yeah. Because the line, I think, is yeah. the lyric line. Is really, really well good. crafted. Yeah. 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 He puts that together. Yeah. One more thing. We This song's been out a while, but we got to do this to end it. I guess I just feel like. I don't know if you've heard this. Yeah, this, is, this song kills. Epic. Yeah. Ooh. Man. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty. So that tone is really interesting. Now, what is going on with that tone? Right. Well, we're going to talk about it. So, all right, yeah, I have, it, so I have it on somewhat good authority. And this is, you know, heard it through the grapevine kind of thing, but tonally, because when I first heard that song, it's a, that's my favorite song on the album. Oh, yeah, for hands sure. down. For sure. Not just for the solo. I think that song just threw out no, is no. super strong. I think he really, like, you feel that song, like, he meant what he was talking about in the lyrics. He wrote it at a specific time, feeling a certain way, right. and it was pure inspiration. Right. Right down to the solo. Yeah. And I can't believe more people aren't talking about that guitar solo. What, what I heard was, um, it was an old Epiphone. It's straight into a really small Fender, I believe a Champ. Champ. Just dimed. Yep. And that's what it is. Because I, I, I reached out to some friends because I was like, what fuzz is that? Like, I need yeah. to know what fuzz and that is. And it's just a little 10-inch speaker. And it's like, dude, it's a it's an old Fender amp dimed to within an inch of its life. Yeah. Small that, amp. That is starting to make a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. If I could, you know, get that tone all the time, I would. I would too. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the coolest guitar sounds that he's ever yeah, gotten. For sure. All right. So overall, first of all, I mean, we have to we have to point out the hidden gem. I mean, that that guitar solo on. I guess I just feel like. I guess yeah. I just feel like. Yeah. Pretty much awesome tone. Yeah. My favorite solo tone of his. Yeah. Right. So unique. Yeah. So unique. Yeah. That actually might be my favorite. John Mayer solo ever. And, wow. And I'm, That's saying, a I'm lot. saying that it's like I'm a genuine Mayer fan. Yeah. I've, I've listened to him for years and years. That to me really steps out as like one of the few performances on record where you could tell it was done in the room in a take. And yeah. he just, he, he caught it yeah. and just yeah. went with it. And He's totally on. Yeah. yeah. And the tone is amazing. I'd like to dig in a little bit more and find out what's going on with that signal yeah. chain. I, would like I, to, I have a rough outline of what's going on, but I really want to know what's happening because I need I need that. So, <laughs> I think I we all that. need that. We need you to tell us what uh, yeah, that is. Keep us, yeah. in, keep, it, keep us in the loop. Yeah, there that. might be a follow-up video yeah, on this. Yeah, yeah. If I can, I've got some sources I might reach out to and see if we can really dig in on what's going on there. So um, overall, what do we think about the record? I like it. I, I like it too. It's one that I feel like because it's so mellow that obviously he has something he's trying to say. So I feel like I need to listen some more Yeah. to, to hear like what he's really trying to, if there's like an overall theme going. I'm, I'm also a fan, but I'm a fan because it's a departure from his normal sort of, uh, well, a lot of the records of the past, which as a guitar player, we tend to just focus on mm -hmm. what he's doing with the guitar in his hand. But as a production nerd, I love the sounds. I love the choices they made. I can't wait to listen to this on my speakers at home and really dig into the mixes. You know, this is a Don Was record. Don produced this mm -hmm. and and you know, so it's gonna sound incredible. I love it. Nice. Yeah. Thanks for uh coming by here and thank you, Chris. Thanks and for having me with so you. So nice guys. to see yeah. you guys. Cool. Absolutely. To hang out. Thank you, man. Thanks yeah, for having man, me. That was really fun. And thanks, John. Next next time you release a record, let's yeah. have you here and we'll do yeah. that. We have some questions. You break it down with us. We have yeah. some questions. <laughs>